Did you know that more than 150 years ago, Alaska was not part of the United States? It was Russian territory. How did a desolate and seemingly useless territory become one of the most profitable real estate deals in history? Join us on this exciting journey through time and discover how Alaska became an invaluable military outpost for the United States in the Cold War. Shall we get started? Alaska's history is fascinating and full of adventure. Since the middle of the 18th century, this territory was in Russian hands, thanks to the intrepid explorers of the Russian Navy, such as Captain Alexei Chirikov, who, together with Vitus Bering, discovered the Aleutian Islands and reached the town of Sitka in 1741. But colonizing Alaska was not easy, and the Russian-American company struggled to establish the first permanent Russian settlement in 1784. Despite the challenges, Alaska became a center of international trade in the 19th century. However, in 1867, Russia was in a difficult financial situation after the Crimean War and fears that the British, who dominated neighboring Canada, would seize Alaska led Emperor Alexander II to make an urgent decision to sell the territory. Although it was a difficult measure, the emperor felt it was the best way to avoid being left empty-handed in the event of an attack against which he would be defenseless. The history of the sale of Alaska is an example of how unpredictable and surprising politics and international relations can be. And I know that what I'm about to tell you will surprise you, and that is that at a time when Russia and the United Kingdom were at odds, relations between Moscow and Washington were quite friendly. Russian assistance during the American Civil War helped create a climate conducive to negotiations. And so, in March 1867, Edward Steckel, the Russian representative, arrived in the United States to negotiate with Secretary of State William Seward. The talks were successful, and on March 30, Russia agreed to cede Alaska to the United States for a final price of $7.2 million at the time. However, this transaction was not well received by public opinion in either country. The Russians were reluctant to give up land that was rich in gold and in which they had invested so much effort. The Americans, on the other hand, were unhappy with the idea of spending such a large sum of money in such an isolated region. The American press ridiculed Alaska with nicknames like Seward's Folly or Seward's Icebox. But what they didn't know was that this would mean a great breakthrough and opportunity for Americans. Alaska in the hands of the United States. The year was 1867, and a prominent US official became the object of ridicule and insult for an extravagant purchase he had authorized with public funds. On March 30 of that year, the United States had paid the incredible sum of $7.2 million to the Russian imperial government for the territory of Alaska, a vast wilderness that seemed to have little economic value. Skeptics scoffed at Seward's folly, as they called the Alaska Purchase, associating it with the Secretary of State William Seward, the official who had pushed the transaction. But as it is often the case, time proved Seward right. In time, the acquisition of the territory became one of the most successful real estate deals in history. It is fascinating to consider the history of the US purchase of Alaska in 1867 and its price compared to its value today. The $7.2 million paid by the US government to Tsar Alexander II of Russia for the vast territory, which covers more than 1.7 million square kilometers, will be worth more than $100 million today when inflation is taken into account. This figure is unimaginably cheap to acquire what is now the largest state in the Union. It is difficult to understand how a transaction of this magnitude could be accomplished at such a low cost, especially when one considers the economic, cultural, and natural wealth that Alaska has brought to the United States over the years. The Alaska Purchase has been called by many one of the best real estate investments in history, and not without reason. From the gold rush of the 1890s to the discovery of oil in the 1960s, Alaska's natural wealth has been an invaluable resource to the U.S. economy. In retrospect, the purchase of Alaska may have been met with derision and skepticism at the time, but time has shown that it was a wise and prudent move on the part of the United States. Not only has it proven to be a strategic area for national defense, but it has also provided significant natural resources and has been home to rich indigenous cultures and immigrant communities that have enriched America's cultural diversity. Alaska is a story of vast land and boundless resources. The US purchase of this territory in 1867 not only added more than 1.5 billion square kilometers to the country, but also ushered in a new era of exploration and discovery. If every acre of land in Alaska were valued at $100 today, the entire state would be worth more than $15 billion a staggering sum that dwarfs the $7.2 million paid for it at the time. But Alaska is much more than land. It is a vast reservoir of natural resources. Within less than two decades of its acquisition, vast quantities of gold were discovered in the region, sparking a gold rush. 
Then, in the mid-20th century, oil companies discovered vast deposits in the north of the state, which have been heavily exploited ever since. Alaska's oil wealth is so great that every year the state government hands out bonuses to residents just for being residents. And that's just crazy. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Despite all this, Alaska holds a special place in the American imagination as a land of unlimited opportunity and resources, and as a reminder of the boldness and spirit of exploration that characterizes the country's history. If you like what we've told you so far, don't forget to like and share this video with someone who loves history. Alaskans get rewards just for being from Alaska. Today, Alaska is a thriving economy with a population of nearly 1 million and a GDP of $44 billion annually, which is more than 400 times what Russia received for selling the territory in the 19th century. The amazing thing about all this is that every year the citizens of Alaska receive a sum of money from their authorities as an annual gift of their oil wealth. This fact may seem surprising to those who are used to paying taxes and not receiving cash from the government. I know, we are the majority. It is certainly a living example of how a region considered worthless can be transformed into a source of wealth and prosperity, and how innovative policies can create lasting benefits for generations to come. Not to mention, the sale of Alaska wasn't just an economic issue, it also had strategic and military implications. It is rumored that one of the main reasons Russian Tsar Alexander II decided to sell the territory was his fear that Great Britain, the world's superpower at the time, and the owner of Western Canada, had expansionist intentions toward Russia. Thus, Alaska could have become a coveted target for the British. It is yet another example of how international politics and conflicts between countries can have lasting and surprising consequences in history. The Russian Tsar Alexander II, fearing a possible British expansion into Russia, decided to sell the territory of Alaska to the United States in 1867. But what he could not have foreseen was that nearly a century later, in the midst of the Cold War, Alaska would become a key part of US military strategy against the Soviet Union. The territory became an outpost for American troops, radar, and aircraft, placing them right on the Russian border. And it is well known that Russia's sale of Alaska appears to have been a mistake, both economically and strategically. But they were not alone in underestimating the value of their territories. In 1803, France sold the vast territory of Louisiana to the United States for far less than its true value. Sometimes historical decisions can have unexpected and lasting consequences. Undoubtedly, the greatest beneficiary of all these crises has been the United States and how well it has used them. It was a lucky nation. In the 19th century, it achieved a gigantic increase in its territory, paying ridiculous sums to the European powers, which at the time could not foresee the economic expansion that the country would have just a few decades later. Alaskans will enthusiastically celebrate every anniversary of their incorporation into the United States, thanks to the initiative of Secretary Seward, whom history will remember not as a madman, as his contemporaries feared, but as the architect of one of the greatest deals of all time. What do you think of this part of history? And do you think it was a good deal? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. See you next time.